we continue reading in Luke's Gospel, but my copy is not here. Hmm. Took you took it. <laughs> yeah, okay. There it is. There it's back. <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive. Thank you, John. We are in the 10th chapter of Luke now, beginning at verse 38, the story that I just told with the children. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think it's obvious from the lesson that we just read and the conversation between Jesus and Martha, that Jesus never cooked Thanksgiving dinner for a big crowd, right? <laughs> Jesus never worked in a group project in school. Jesus never served on a committee in the church, right? Because don't we all get Martha? Raise your hand if you get Martha. You get Martha. Because we have all been in that little bit self-righteous position of saying, I'm doing all the work. She's getting all the credit. He's getting all the glory. He's sitting there doing nothing, watching me sweat and slave. Now, we get a few things from the context of this story that you need to know a little about the culture to understand. Martha is apparently the head of the household, which probably means that she and her sister Mary, and who was their brother? Lazarus. Probably means that their parents had died and Martha was the oldest. And we also know that she and her sister and her brother and Jesus are very close friends. How do we know that? Think about it. That's where Jesus goes for a little R&R. &R. That's where he goes for downtime. We also know about it because Martha feels very comfortable going up and just fussing at her Lord. Do you have friends that you can talk that way to and just like let it all out and they still love you anyway? The kind of people who come in your house and you can just say, oh, just get what you want out of the refrigerator, take your shoes off, put your feet up. They're that kind of friend. But Mary has decided to sit down at the feet of the Lord and listen, and Martha is incensed. And she goes to Jesus, and she says, tell her to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha. Now, maybe we think Jesus is really chastising her, sort of the way the prophet Amos lets the people have it. I always hate when Amos shows up in the lectionary because Amos is one of those prophets who never has a good word for anybody. Amos is just one of those ones who says, woe is you. You're about to get it, folks, because you have really done it this time. A basket of summer fruit. Well, we don't speak Hebrew. If, raise, hand, raise your hand if you studied Hebrew, because I sure didn't. Bill, did you take Hebrew in seminary? I did not have time to take Hebrew. But it's a Hebrew pun, because the word for summer fruit is the same as the word for the end, the way it would be pronounced in those days. God's making a little funny there. God is saying, the sun, I'm putting a basket of summer fruit before you, what do you see? And Amos says, dong, 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 the end. <laughs> the end. And God is saying, I am so tired of the way my people are behaving. They're going through the motions of worship. They're going through the motions of discipleship. Not the word they used in the Old Testament, but of being the followers of God. They want to get back to work. They want the new moon to be over. That's the festival. That is going to worship. They want it to be over so they can get back to work. And what's their work? They're cheating people. They're putting their thumb on the scale. They're doing everything that God doesn't want them to do. And God says, I'm going to send a famine your way. Not a famine that means it's not going to rain so you won't be able to harvest your crops and eat. I'm going to stop talking to you because you have obviously stopped listening to me. That's not what Jesus says when he says, Martha, Martha. Now, if you're my age or older or a little bit around my age, when you hear Martha, Martha, maybe you think, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> That's another sister thing. That's from the Brady Bunch. Some of you have seen it on Nick at Night. Some of us saw it when it was Nick at New. <laughs> but every time, the big sister always does everything right, and the little sister's like, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. No, to say Martha, Martha is a word of comfort and consolation. Have you ever said to anyone, there, there? Did 
doesn't mean look over there, look over there. They're there. It's a way of calming. It's a way of giving peace. It's a way of showing compassion. He said, there were two choices right now. Mary chose the better. She sat and listened to me. Now, I'm glad I wasn't there at the time because I would have said, then make your own dinner, Jesus. <laughs> but Martha was doing what was right. She was showing hospitality, and Jesus is not saying to her, what you're doing is wrong. He's saying you're letting the worry and the distraction and the busyness get in the way. Sort of like the ancient Israelites who got so hung up in the law that they forgot the God who was behind the law. They got so hung up in doing things in a precise way that they missed the point of what it was that they were supposed to do. To care for each other, not to cheat each other. To worship God with their whole heart. Well, when I read the story this morning, and this is actually last week's lecture, but we had the dance ministry here last week. But I wanted to talk about this because I read the profile for Epworth before I came here, and one of the things that there seems to be a little bit of a divide on in the congregation is why we worship, right? Some people say we come here for a sense of sitting at the feet of the Lord and listening. Some people feel that we come here to get our motivation to go out into the world and live as Jesus Christ teaches us to live. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, folks, and you do pay me a paycheck, so I'm going to tell you why we worship. It's neither of those reasons. We come here to this place to give thanks and praise and glory to the God who made us, the God who saves us, the God who redeems us, the God who lives in and through us. That's why we come. We come to bring ourselves. We come to bring our songs. We come to bring our praise. Now, we do take something away from worship, and that is where the divide comes. Because some people want to come and leave with a sense of peace and well-being. Amen to that. Some people want to come and listen for Jesus to speak in their hearts, in the stillness of this beautiful space that's holy. That's why we call it a sanctuary, a holy place. And others want to come to get their, their mojo on, to get ready to go into the world. They want to hear that word that inspires and lifts them and sends them into the world. Well, I started to think, how do we explain this? And I came up with a little video that I want to show you. And both Barry and Mike looked at it and said, how in the world is this going to be in a sermon? We don't know. But I'm going to direct you for a moment to the screen. Some of you may know some of these. The candy mint serves as a breast mint. Stop. You're both right. New serves is two mints in one. Stops bad breath in seconds. Tastiest mint of all. Yes, only new certs gives you two, two, two mints in one. Yep. Mmm, peanut butter. Mmm, chocolate. <laughs> you got peanut butter on my chocolate. Well, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. Every cookie here at Left Twix is extra crisp, so it stays crunchy when we apply caramel and chocolate. We went on a tour, right, Twix? And they have the exact same thing. <laughs> and up ahead, we have the Left Twix caramel stirrer, evenly distributing heat. To ensure consistent taste, right, Twix has the same thing. They have packing tape like that over at Right Twix? Try both. Pick a side. Twix. Those of you who have known me for three weeks know now that chocolate speaks to me. <laughs> We're trying to choose between the same thing. When we come to worship, it's like Mary coming to sit at the feet of her Lord. She needs to hear that word. That's why I'm going to take off next month. I'm going to take off two Sundays. I normally would not do that so soon after receiving a new appointment. But I go to the Adirondacks to a place called the Pyramid Life Center, which is a Roman Catholic retreat center. There is no cell phone service. There is no internet. There's no Wi-Fi. There are bears and loons. <laughs> and I go there because that is where I feel close to God. And I need to go and sit there and receive a word from my Savior. I need to go be in the presence of God in a sense that I can't do in the busyness of my everyday life. But I don't get to stay there because I go there to be fed so that I can come back and work, so that I can come back and serve. I was thinking when I read the lesson, too, of um, 
Anna and Nathan Glenn, who are visiting another church this morning that helps support them in their ministry. How many of you got to hear them speak Sunday night a week ago? A powerful testimony to what they do. They work hard. They teach people how to farm. And they actually farm themselves, and they work in making a business out of chocolate that will support the people in Liberia, some of the poorest people on earth. But how do they begin every morning? Does anybody remember the song they sing every morning before they start? In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world, give me Jesus. You start with listening. You start with sitting at the feet of your Lord, and then you receive the energy that you need to get out into the world and be the body of Christ. People ask me often, they say, you can be a Christian and not go to church, right? What do y'all say? This is going to be a right twix, left twix here, right? Can you be saved without going to church? Yes. And if you can't go to church, if you can't be part of the worshiping body because of infirmity or illness or injury, that's one thing. Some people have said to me, you know, Pastor, I worship God just as well on the golf course. I thought, you're praying for a hole in one. But I don't think you're praying for the needs of the world. And until Charles Stanley can reach through the screen and serve you the body and blood of Christ, it's not about going to church. It's about being the church. We are the body of Christ. And Jesus did the same thing, didn't he, as Mary and Martha. Jesus took time away with his father to pray. But then he went back into the world to heal and to serve and to proclaim and to live the faith that he was given through his father. We can choose one way or the other, or we can just decide together that however we are called and however we are led, that serving Christ is our priority. Bringing other people to Jesus Christ is what we're here for. We are here for a sense of our own selves. Amen. Because if I didn't have time apart with my Lord, I don't know how I would get through the next day. But that can't be where it stops, or we miss who we are as his disciples. Now, your call to worship this morning was the letter to the church at Colossae. And it says that Jesus Christ is the image of what we can't see. In Jesus, we see the invisible God. In Jesus, we see all the of fullness of God, who God calls us to be. So instead of saying, should we be like Mary, sitting at the feet of the Lord, or should we do like Martha, to serve and to work and to give ourselves, to do or to be, to do or to be, to do or to be. I thought of a song, and you're going to help me sing it. Do, be, do, be, do, be, do. Come on, you know it. If you're my age, you're older, you know it. Do, be, 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 do. Be do be do be do be When you put the being and the doing together, you make beautiful music. So what if instead of choosing one way or the other, what if you got some of your Mary on my Martha, and I got some of my Martha on your Mary? Two great tastes that trace great together. There are two, two, two forms of discipleship in one church. Amen.